This is Dune, Part 1. On the desert planet of Arrakis is a rare substance called spice, which is necessary for interstellar travel, making it the most valuable resource in the galaxy. So the Galactic Empire has been occupying Arrakis, which entails oppressing the locals. It's very much an oil in the Middle East situation. Our story begins with Timothy Chalamet as Paul Atreides, son of the noble Atreides house. His father Duke Leto is a real good guy. The Emperor has just put them in charge of Arrakis, which should be a very good thing, but it's maybe a bad thing. The Emperor's jealous house Atreides is getting too strong, so he's sending them to Arrakis and hoping they fail. Before they leave, Paul's mom wakes him up for a secret midnight meeting with his creepy grandma. Paul's mom is from the Order of the Bene Gesserit, a group of witch women with psychic-like powers, including the voice where they can make you follow commands. She's like, yo, Paul, put your hand in this box, and if you take it out, I'll kill ya. The box hits him with intense pain, but she has to see if he can mind over matter. But Paul's mom has trained him well with the famous phrase, fear is the mind killer, which means, you know, don't give in to fear, I can master my own emotions. They had to test Paul to see if he's their chosen one from the Bene Gesserit's millennia-long scheme. It's a complicated situation, more on this later, so Paul leaves his home world full of nice cool water for the deserts of Arrakis, which kinda suck. There's no water out in the deserts, so you gotta wear these still suits which recycle your sweat so you can drink it. They hop in their cool dragonfly helicopters to go see how the spice is harvested. It's a dangerous operation because the harvesters attract the sandworms. They're prepared for this, they just fly away, but today there's a malfunction. So Paul goes down to help evacuate the workers where he's hit with his first wave of spice. Now spice is not spaceship fuel, it's actually a hallucinogen. Isn't so nice technology is very advanced, but in other ways not because they don't like computers. Computers. Instead, they like using the human mind, like mentats who have trained to be really good at math, so with no computers to calculate hyperspace jumps, they rely on guild navigators who snort a bunch of spice and have visions of the future of which route is safe, and Paul is especially sensitive to spice, he has his first vision of Zendaya, and maybe they make out, or maybe she kills him, but now's no time to be chirping out, cause a sandworm is coming, and just how big are these sandworms? incomprehensibly large. So to survive on this world, Hasatrades will need to cultivate desert power. And no one knows the desert better than the locals, the Fremen, who have cool blue eyes from exposure to spice. They have a very unique culture, like spitting is polite. Thank you for sharing your body's water with us. Duke Lido's like, hey, I'm gonna change things around here. No more oppressing you. I want us to be friends. But this guy's like, eh, I'll believe it when I see it. The former ruler of Arrakis was House Harkonnen. Real bad people who oppressed the Fremen hard. Baron Harkonnen didn't want to give it up because he who controls the spice controls the universe. But he made a secret deal with the emperor, who's loaning him some of his elite troops, the Sardaukar, and they launch a sneak attack on House Atreides. Now, they don't use guns in this world either. They're all about hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's because they all have energy shields that deflect anything fast like a bullet. So everyone trains in knife fighting where you can get in close for a good slow hit. So House Atreides is overwhelmed and Baron Harkonnen's retaken Arrakis. He's a real chunky guy, but he uses anti-gravity tech to float around real creepy-like. He had an inside man here, the Atreides doctor, but he only helped the Harkonnens because they kidnapped his wife, and so he left Duke Leto a secret. Yes, it's the poison tooth sneak attack, but Baron Harkonnen survives with a nice healing oil bath, and by the way his nephew is Dave Batista. Meanwhile, Paul and his mom were captured, they knew to gag her, but she had been training Paul in the voice, and he's able to do it well enough, they escape, but they have no home to go back to. There is one Atreides survivor, their best fighter, Duncan Idaho. He picks up Paul and his mom and they seek shelter with a local scientist who's trying to terraform Arrakis to not be a desert, but the Sardaukar find them, so Duncan Idaho makes his epic last stand, takes all these guys out, but eventually he's killed. But he got time for Paul and mom to escape, and to avoid Harkonnen forces, they fly into the sandstorm. Paul realizes he has to turn the engines off, and let the sandstorm just carry him. They make it to safety, but not really, cause they're still in the middle of the desert, and humans walking causes rhythmic vibrations that will attract the sandworms, so they gotta do the weird sandworm walk where you walk without rhythm and mimic the natural sounds of the desert. Unfortunately, they don't quite get it right and soon a sandworm's coming for him. But they make it to a rock just in time so the sandworm stops and Paul stares this massive thing down. Now they're found by the Fremen. This is one of their leaders, Stilgar. They're not very friendly to outsiders so Paul and his mom have to defend themselves. One of the Fremen gets the drop on Paul. Yes, it's Zendaya, Paul's dream girl. In his dream visions, they always seem to be in love. Uh, but for now, she's not impressed. And to get his honor back, the Fremen Paul the Sorum has to challenge him to single combat and Paul's visions of this guy too where he becomes his good friend and mentor. So Paul uses his knife fight skills to make this guy yield, then they can become friends. But yielding is not allowed. This has to be a fight to the death. So Paul has no choice but to kill this guy, and he realizes his visions are not set in stone. So the general plan is to get off world. If they can expose that the emperor took sides against the noble house, they can unite the other noble houses against him and avenge their house Atreides. But now Paul's like, actually, I gotta stay here. My road leads into the desert. Earlier, Paul had his biggest vision of an epic battle where the Fremen united against imperial forces, and and Paul was leading them, so that's his best plan to avenge his father. But the vision went on to show him leading that army of Fremen across the galaxy in an endless bloody war. 
So he wants to avoid that part if possible. But why would the Fremen follow Paul anyway? Well, this goes back to the Bene Gesserit chosen one thing. A thousand years ago, they seeded this prophecy of an off-world Messiah, and Paul seems to have fit all the signs. So Paul and his mom are heading off to a Fremen city as siege. But it's a long walk through the desert. The Fremen have a faster way to travel. They freaking ride on the sandworms. And that's where we leave Polytrades for now. We'll pick up there in Dune Part 2. If you liked this recap, hit that subscribe button for more of the best recaps of TV and movies.